Small shoes. Corn. Pogo stick. Naughty Hoover. <laughs> I was just going to sit here and I was seeing how long yeah. until you were like, hey, hey. everybody, oh. take a peek. <laughs> Listen to us. Uh, episode 35 of Is We Dumb? Joe Paisley. Dan Cummins. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun today. We have a Dumb Dumb Idiots listener edition to get to. Mm -hmm. And there are some very, very funny stories. Good, good. I like funny stories. I'm going to spark uh, at a whole barrage of conversation that I'm not even sure <laughs> where it's going to go. As I, right. as I don't know every single show. I, As that, we open it up. I know I like that. Uh -huh. Who knows where each show is going to go? We don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, Facebook and Instagram, at Is We Dumb. We post a lot of great videos. I know Logan Keith works really hard on a lot of the content that's there. We have yeah. like, animations and stuff. Yes. Thomas Royal. Mm -hmm. Been killing it with some animations. Very excited about that. Yeah. And we're posting those on the YouTube channel as well. So yes. uh, if you follow us, uh, Bad Magic Productions on YouTube, you'll also see those animations. And they're getting a high price. So far. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, and deserved. Yes, yes. Uh, and you also follow our own personal Instagrams. Mine is Reverend Dr. Paisley, which is R-E-V-D-R Paisley. And you can find mine uh, at Dan Cummins Comedy. It's a f and it's funny. It's comedy there. <laughs> I, I hated that. I, I actually hate the uh, comedy after it. I just wanted to be Dan Cummins, just my name. Well, fuck. A lot of Dan Cummins out there. <laughs> Who knew? And there was that one car dealership. Oh, that, yeah. That they consistently gobble up every new platform. <laughs> <laughs> they're there first. They're like on top you, of it. Like some super rogue one. Mm -hmm. uh, you were uh, you happen to be awake at one o'clock in the morning. It just launched. You saw an article about it. You get there, Dan Cummins is gone. Right, exactly. This is a car dealership. Yep, Paris, Kentucky. Son of a bitch. Dan Cummins Chevrolet. <laughs> and that sweet, sweet musician. <laughs> yeah. Whoever that Pandora shit. That's I, so funny too. I, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> it hasn't happened for a while. Oh but, god, I forgot about that. Yeah, there's on the social, there's the Dan Cummins Chevrolet. Get yourself to P uh, Paris for a Dan <laughs> Cummins deal. There's that guy. Yeah. And then on all of the albums like Spotify. Pandora, there's uh -huh. a Christian heavy metal act <laughs> who's put out just enough albums to constantly hit mix his catalog. So I get those <laughs> I <laughs> messages that. every once in a while. I didn't know you also did like wow. like clean heavy metal. Hey, Shredfest. Uh, I don't. Danny Shredfest, what's up? I love that some people would think that I do like profane comedy <laughs> right? and then super clean heavy metal. It's a, a total flip act. Those are the worlds that I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so go join the private mm -hmm. Facebook group, Is We Dummies. It is just growing and growing. It's a lot of fun. We got some new merch Another announcement, we've dropped a couple t-shirts and sweatshirts over the last couple weeks. Yeah. And as of today, we have brand new Is We Dumb cut vinyl stickers in the store. Uh, and there's a little bit of everything. You got the, the Brad, oh, yeah. <laughs> that logo, uh, that's going to be in a cutout. You got the full logo that you see right here. You've got a different one that just has a question mark and Stoopy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's on it. You got just lettering. Uh, it's, you know, just simple text that's going to be cut out all around. Looks good on the window. Just in time for things opening up. Yeah, just in time for you to go stick them on somebody's card. Does it, no idea what the show is. Yes. He'll be offended. We're going to get more social as time goes goes on, moving forward. More <laughs> vaccines, yeah. more people out and about, more uh, time for stickers. More pricks and then more uh, sticks. I don't more know. Pr I wanted to say and sticks. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, let's get the brain warmed up. Let's do it. I'm really excited. I need, for I need to get warmed up because it was so sunny and warm yesterday. And then today it did that thing where it does like, it would have been fine if it wouldn't have been sunny for me. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh my God, spring is here. <laughs> and then Mother Nature's like, ha, ah, nope. <laughs> How about don't? <laughs> and then it's just so extra, like, womp, womp, womp. <laughs> Went from like 64 and sunny mm -hmm. to today it's like 28 and miserable. Yep, 28 and we're not going to see the sun all day. <laughs> Yay. Let's get, all right, let's get happy. Start us off, Zach. The very super most important starting question. This is not a would you rather that I have made up, but okay. I have no idea where it came from. Okay. I've just seen it floating around the internet, but I have no way of crediting it. So you, if, so you found this? Uh, or yeah. someone else found it? Okay, I mean, okay. I found it, but it's I didn't make it. Right, right, right. So I don't, know where, I don't know where the fuck it came from. Okay. But my God, is it great. Okay. Would you rather Healy into the room before having sex... Or Healy out of the room after <laughs> having sex. And if you're confused, you hit, you're like, Healy? What's, yeah. what's that? There's those shoes that roll. For anyone that has never heard of Healy's, yeah. you see, I'm sure you've seen little kids zipping down the sidewalk. Oh, that's so doing funny. sick tricks. <laughs> They're just too tired to walk and just tired enough to roll. I had some like random idea involving a Healy years ago. <laughs> when I was a uh, brief period in Spokane before I like moved to LA, before I moved back to Coeur d'Alene. I was making these little like sketch videos with this guy in okay. Spokane. I had like Johnny Gunn, this crazy workout dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you did. And then I had, I think, the, I think the only two little 
things we did. It was that one, and then the civil Satanist, some like super nice guy who happens to be way into Satan. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did a Navy Eel shortly before that with this new camera guy, where it's like he was like a pathological liar. There's one step above Navy Eel, and then I and then I never finished this. But our next sketch series was about this dude who hung out at the Spokane Valley Mall, uh-huh. and he was like the guy who tries to be really cool with the kids, and he's not a pedophile, <laughs> but he would give every indication outwardly. You're like that guy fucking creeps me out. <laughs> totally nice guy. He totally missed harmless. his chance. Yeah, he missed his chance to be cool. Right. But he's not letting go of it. Right. And now he's like the like the manager of the Orange Julius. He's in his like <laughs> mid thirties, and one of his defining like uh, wardrobe things was Heelys. He he was the guy who, like the normal kids are hanging out of the food court, and then he fucking Heelys from like thirty feet away. What's up, guys? Hey, hey, yeah. check this out. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> <You> see ya. <laughs> and it never failed to crack me up. Just the image of like a 35 year old man <laughs> right. dressed like a 16 year old fucking healing across the food court. What up, kids? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> hey, guys. And the, wow. <laughs> and they're always like, oh, it's fucking Derek or whatever. <laughs> right, whatever his name. I think Derek's about right for that. All right. <laughs> uh, and then take that exact example yeah. and put it into the bedroom. Um, I just picture, you know, per- light- lights yeah. are off. Yeah. My wife's waiting for me in bed. You know, mm-hmm. we've, for, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I knew ahead of time that we're going to have sex, which right. I don't. I guess, right. <laughs> but this time I did. Yeah. And the door just cracks open and you can see a silhouette of me and just a Healy noise. Just, <laughs> hey. <laughs> I like it because. Uh, Joe, can you get the fuck out of here? <laughs> what? <laughs> you think that's sexy? Come on. And you have to then, I mean, Healy's are, you know, to do those, you have to have those special shoes on. <laughs> you sure do. So then the image is you have to either have the shoes on right before sex or right after, or, or just the whole time. So you're naked except for the Healy's. Whoa, yeah. And then and then the second you're done having sex, <laughs> then you, you just Healy on out the room. I'm pretty sure Healy's are- be a are, porno where like, someone's healing around. The opposite of birth control. <laughs> like they get you so much puss. It's unstoppable. Heelys? Yeah. <laughs> no. Unstoppable. <laughs> you wear them during sex, 100% chance. <laughs> what would be the ultimate, like, just birth control for something? Like, like Heelys, I mean, I used to say fanny pack, but now those are kind of, like, cool. Coming back. Right. Yeah. What kind of fashion accessory paired with a Heely just guarantees you're never going to have sex? Uh, I mean, things that I just, we've talked about a little bit. Uh, right. You roll in, you got Heelys, you got a yo-yo, maybe some pogs, right. and a fake owl. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing here? What are you doing, you maniac? <laughs> Man, before or afterwards, I mean, afterwards is kind of funnier to me. <laughs> like a little victory roll away. God, that was great. And then just as you heal away. <laughs> you see, off to the bathroom. <laughs> and this is different now because like, I have to think like, okay, being married and right. married for a while, there's whatever. No- there's nothing I would be able to possibly do right. that would throw Aaron off. Right. So like, oh my God, you're such an idiot. Right, exactly. So it's like it's, other shit I would do all day. This is, this is a much tougher decision, uh, single. But mm-hmm. I was, but if I was like single, I think it would have to be afterwards, <laughs> or else you're going to ruin your chances. Right, exactly. <laughs> Healing to the potential sex is probably going to kill the sex with like uh, somebody you've just met. I mean, how weird would that be too? Like a one night stand. Like <laughs> <laughs> you come home from the bar. Like she goes in the bathroom to kind of get ready or so. You know, like like you go. Hey, one second, I'll be right, I'll be right in. <laughs> And and then you just roll into wherever it's about to happen. I mean, how often would that just end it right there? I don't know. If you take some cool trick, you could do it on one foot or, or backwards, <laughs> kind of a moonwalk look. Hey, e, hi. What <laughs> oh if, my. What if it was the opposite as the guy? Would you have cared if some girl that you had gone home with, <laughs> that you were really into wanting to have sex with, mm-hmm. then right before you think it's going to happen, she heal, healies on over to the bed. I don't you think know I care. Guys, you know how guys are. I know. They'd block that shit. They'd be like, oh, that's, that's oh, whatever. That That is the craziest thing. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, that's totally normal. They just try to do anything they could to make, just block it out. Carry on with what's about to happen. Address it later. <laughs> ah, like a horny dude is such a terrible thing. I think about this buddy of mine who I won't name because he would not want to be named, but he told me this story. I mean, and this is a really nice guy. He is not into, he is a very, uh, you know, love everybody, all different kinds of people. It's Zach. It's not Zach. Oh. No, this is true. He, <laughs> he, was, he was on the road years ago doing comedy and he was hanging out with this girl, super hot girl. She ends up like, hey, do you want to go to this party? And he gets there. It is literally a neo-Nazi party. Like <laughs> finds out that she is a neo-Nazi. And I'm like, oh my God, did you get the fuck out of there? And he was like, yeah. He's like, I want to get out of there. And then he's like, well, she was super hot. <laughs> but. <laughs> and, this is, and this is a guy who is not about, I mean, he is very, very like friends of every color, you know, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And he knew he's like, I, I need to get out of here. But he was but. hammered. And he was also like, but she's also a fucking smoke show. Right. I and just so, picture him trying to leave like so hard. And his dick's like, no, 
And he's like, no. he, like keeps pulling him, pulling, no. him, pulling him by his pants and like <laughs> right, yanking him back right. in the room. No and, way, buddy. And he was probably like 25 yeah. or something. But it's like, I think about like 19, 20 year old. And there is so few things that could have just been like, nope, this is a deal breaker for mm-hmm. a one night stand. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but I don't think it's like that at all the other way usually. Yeah, totally not. I think there's a lot of deal breakers. Is there anything the worse side. than Healy's? Like, could you pogo stick in? That's funny. <laughs> pogo <laughs> stick in? <laughs> Yeah, that's more. <laughs> like, that's like, more jarring. Like, think about if you're like from a from the female perspective. Yeah, uh, if I'm coming in, right, and you're in you're in bed, right, and you just hear this really faint pogo noise. Like, I'm, I have to make it from the garage. <laughs> like, you see, like this bouncing up the steps and like through the kitchen. It's like my head smashing into the lights and shit. <laughs> right, like, just right. trying to get in. But <sighs> the way out would pretty would be really funny. Right, you're like, oh, all right, that was great, babe. Just boing, boing, just right <laughs> out the window. <laughs> I just think about all the entrances now, like if you, especially if if you can't comment on them, because there's no word about comedy. You could be like, "Sorry, no. this is." I, I don't. I mean, I don't know what your explanation would be. <laughs> You're just yeah. Like, it's yet to get make be cool, be a better person. <laughs> when you said pogo stick, it made me go to like I don't know why my brain went to stilts and then went to like Renaissance, Renaissance fair. You know, like the old time, like the jugglers right. in like the jester costume, but on stilts. Mm-hmm. Like what a fucking ridiculous entrance that would be <laughs> if you go into the bathroom and then all of a sudden you're ducking, like you barely get under and you have these stilts and you're juggling and you have the jester hat on. <laughs> and your stilts have Heelys. <laughs> <laughs> now and that's you, impressive. And then you Heely stilt on over to the bed. Boy, that's a that's a rare person who sticks around for sex at that. You're point, not even gonna get to have sex because she's gonna come right then. <laughs> like you just ruin your own chances. She's out. She she's going to bed, and you just you just uh, played yourself. You tall, stilted wheelie clown. I, I, I think I think going back to the, I don't know afterwards. I guess I'll have to pick afterwards. Okay, that's fine. And, and and I think that would go for any random. Uh, you know, combination of juggling stilts, pogo sticks, mm-hmm. whatever it would be. Married or single, it would have to be leaving after sex. Okay. Because then at least you've had sex. Yeah, at least uh, you can try to explain that. Oh, my God, I was just goofy Sorry, and relaxed. And... We're guy. <laughs> we're guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll go, I'll go after as well. It's just, I don't, I am internally wired to not ruin my chances. I know there is, <laughs> there is a drive. It's like, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I know like plenty of women, you know, have like, uh, great sex drives as well and there's always that debate of like well how much of it is like cultural and women culturally historically have not been yeah. you know uh, pushed to like pursue their sex drives and the opposite in fact and be more chaste and how much is dudes so I can't speak for like what it's like on the other side but I just know in my experience talking to women about how just horny creepy horny dudes are it's generally not met with a oh yeah me too <laughs> oh wow I get it oh yeah yeah that's exactly like me and my friends <laughs> we just like we just go and we're like how much fucking dick can we get tonight I get like, I get okay go home with purses full of dick <laughs> <laughs> it's just usually the goal is to go out and get that dick. Like, and I know that does happen, but like, it, it doesn't seem to be the same. And because I'm such a weirdo, there's right. a part though, it's healing in is kind of a checkpoint. Where I'm like, is she cool? Like, is she going to be, <laughs> if, if she's down for this, yeah. she might be able to handle all the other weird shit I do. Well, that's another weird, that's another because, interesting uh, thing. I mean, if she's like, nah, that's, that's the deal breaker, I'm out of here, I'd be right. like, good, because what was going to follow is not any better. That is including an exci- the sex. That is an exciting thing, where if you could like go in with an extreme crazy entrance, she's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> right. You're like, this is probably going to be exciting <laughs> sex. <laughs> like flame, flame <laughs> right. Right. spit and fire. <laughs> above the bed right he's doing all these carny tricks well with, that's go with, ahead, with a theme song yeah right. <laughs> well that's the exact <laughs> <laughs> welcome <laughs> to my pad well and that's the opposite i mean i've heard i don't know how many guys i've talked to about this uh but that thing of you know like why would you stick around with this girl who does x y and z who mm-hmm. like fucking slashes your tires and does all this crazy stuff 99% of the time it's like oh the sex is amazing <laughs> I don't mind that <laughs> <laughs> right right. why do you deal with that much crazy because the fucking sex is on fire mm-hmm. that's why and I get it so if you were like one night stand and some girl came out with this crazy entrance yeah th- rather than part of me being like weirded out like I gotta get out of here uh, a much larger part of me like oh here we go <laughs> this is gonna be fantastic never done this before <laughs> right, right. <laughs> where are we putting those balls <laughs> alright you ready to move on yes okay let's hear about how dumb you were this weekend okay yay <laughs> Hi, Dan. Hello. And once again, uh, the theme of skiing and dumb shit continues. This will this will be the last one, at least of the year for me. For me again, <laughs> I might get more. We'll you see. might get more. For me, for me again, this is new. Uh, you know, going skiing is a new thing. And so I went this past weekend. My dumb thing that I did, I went with Kyler Monroe 
and then uh, Doug, our friend Doug. Hi, Doug. <laughs> Hi, Doug. And then so we um, we went we went for a couple hours in the morning, and then Monroe had a snowboarding lesson at one on Silver Mountain. Okay. And uh, had a great time. Went on some blue runs, which is if you've skied or snowboarded much, is not a big deal for most people. It's like the step above the beginners. I'm, but it's the spot. Like that's where. That's where it all begins. Yeah, you start going on, on some blues. steeper runs, mm-hmm. and uh, and we did them, and we went down a few, and it was you know a lot of cutting back and forth, didn't fall down, but it was definitely like work. And Kyler got kind of freaked out, and he was like, "I ah, I could do them, but it just it didn't seem like fun. It was just I, I'd rather go on a more comfortable run for right, right now, right. you know." And so he wanted to sit out for a little bit. Um, uh, after Monroe's lesson. Okay. He was like, when we met up with her after the lesson, she wanted to work on some new technique that required a steeper hill. Okay. And then just being like protective dad, I'm like, well, I want to go with you. So we went on this blue run <laughs> that I'd seen before and it, it was pretty steep, but I'm like, well, I've done the steep ones earlier. Not taking into account how tired I was right. from really working hard all morning long. <laughs> yeah. And I've, I've fallen a few times so far, but, sure. not the, but not like this, where it's like, I went down and then it was so steep that I fell and then I would, I wouldn't stop. It's like, I would fall over and then I would slide. And I, that was new for me. And I'm like, yeah. oh shit, I can't. And, and then I would pick up speed sometimes. Cause at first yeah. I'm like, oh, I'll just wait till I stop. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That makes me go faster. <laughs> now you are sledding. Right. I'm sledding. <laughs> just sledding on my body. And then I'm worried about like the ski get, and then I'm getting kind of spun around. Cause then my ski would catch. And I'm like, I want to bust my knee or something. Yeah. So then I'm stopping. So then I have to get up. Uh, and it was so sad people. It was underneath one of the chairlifts. And I was the guy where it's like, I gave up a few times. As people are going by, they're like, you, you got it, buddy. Oh, nice. You, and I'm like, great. I'm that guy. <laughs> Where like random strangers are like, come on, you, you don't give up. You can do it. <laughs> Coming by and give you a pat on the butt. Almost there, big guy. Look at the sad old man down there. Come on, <laughs> cheer him on. Don't be sad. Don't be sad. The whole <laughs> crowd. Right. So then I'm getting up and I'm tr- and after about, I must have fallen, no exaggeration, a s- good six times. <sighs> That's a rough. That's a rough stretch, and, and it gets harder to get up after each time, and I'm a little bit more beat up after each time. Right, and so after the sixth one, I, I just I just gave up, and my ski flew off. I let like it left up the hill. I, I just let myself go faster and faster. I'm just like spinning. I just don't fuck. I don't care anymore. And <laughs> Hello, darkness, my old friend. It's like, this picture you just staring up at this guy. Monroe's Why? watching me from the bottom, and Monroe said she was like, "I felt so bad for you, and I just didn't know how to help." Yeah. So then, like, I slide down to the bottom. I'm on my back. I make it to the bottom of the run where there's like a green run that connects. And then the dumb thing I did is it's just bad timing. This not very nice lady, she comes over, she's with her two kids and she goes, um, she goes, are you okay? Just checking in with me. And I should have just said like, oh, I'm fine. And then went on, but I was so frustrated in the moment. And I knew she had little kids right next yeah. to her. And, and I was so mad in the moment. I just go, I'm fucking done. <laughs> and then she just goes, <laughs> she just goes, Okay. And then she <laughs> just takes her kids and walks away. She, I would have been like, no, you're not. <laughs> and then pointed to how much farther you have to go. Right, right, right. <laughs> Actually, you're not. Come Actually, on, you're kids. not. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can follow us if you want, but you can't fucking stop here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but I was just like I was commenting on my state of just like yeah. the day but that's not what she was asking <laughs> she was just seeing like this poor guy fell on the hill and she was being nice with her kids and then I'm fucking done <laughs> and then I, the only thing worse you could have done is like face push the, the kids get out of here <laughs> just shove them into the hillside you think you're better than me <laughs> take one of their skis off and throw it up the hill <laughs> Just out of nowhere, <laughs> fuck your family. Right. She's like, what? I was Stupid helping family. I was helping you. <laughs> Kids are ugly. And then, and then, like I said, in front of the road, and then, and then there was other people around. And then <laughs> that, so now I went from like people feeling sorry to me, f- sorry for me, to like, well, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> And I just immediately felt so stupid right after I, yeah. I mean, she, she had walked away too far for me to like, then it would have been weird for me. Like, I'm sorry for cursing. <laughs> right. So I just like let her go. But I'm like, oh man. And then I was fine. Like tense. I was just, it was just that moment. I had just fallen so many times yeah. down the hill and I was, and then I didn't know how I was going to get my ski. Right. Oh. I mean, it's a, it, it, was, it, it is really frustrating. It's, I mean, and also from, if you haven't skied or snowboarded before, you might not understand the, this gap that happens between getting going and being like years in. Oh yeah. Like and there's just there's no way about it. Like if you get in the middle of a fucking run, right. your only options are take your shit off and walk down uh, or like yeah. call the sled to come and bring you down like a big pussy. <laughs> like if you're not hurt, like maybe you should leave it for the guy that has his neck broken. Oh right. And not to take you down cuz you're cuz you're, you're tired. Cuz you're tired. So there's this weird in between where you get stuck in it yeah. and you're just fucked. And it's super uh, frustrating. I remember being there on like on some like, starting to get to that next level of deeper shit. Right. And just sitting there. 
Yeah. You sit at the top and you're like, what the fuck am I doing up here? Yeah. Like, this is not fun. I'm going to eat shit a bunch. And once you fall and it's steep, I mean, it is, it's scary. Yeah. You just, you're so out of going. control. Yeah. That's what like was it new hurts. to me. It's like, uh, yeah, it hurts. And then, oh man, it's like, I don't, I didn't know how to stop. Yeah. And it's like, I would just keep speeding up. Right. And I'm like, well, this isn't good. And then I was so far, I was like, well, man, I should just walk. But then it was so far and I was so tired. I'm like, I'll just walk and fall. Yeah. I'll probably just keep falling. Yep. <laughs> so my, my lesson was like, don't take out your frustrations on innocent bystanders. That, it's a great lesson. Right. It really is. Right. Uh-huh. Like, like uh, so especially when someone's coming to help you, it's like, th- it's not their fault you're in a bad situation. Yeah. And actually, they're the one person trying to make sure you're okay in the situation. And it, but in that moment, it can be so tempting just to like verbally release on whoever happens to be nearby and kill them. And, and I wasn't even even directing it at her. It was more like my state of mind in, towards the world. <laughs> right. I'm fucking done. Like I just want, and I was done with the uh, with the with the, uh, the, the blue the runs day. that day. <laughs> I, went, I, I went on some green runs Back to, to reestablish my uh, confidence. They yeah, still got fine. it. Still, yeah. still can do the baby runs. I like that. It could have been worse. Oh, I could have broken something. You could have broken something. You could have like fallen off or a cat track. I've seen that before. What happens when you fall off? Oh, no. They don't turn, like, they don't turn in time or like they catch That's an my edge nightmare. and they just go off the cat track. Oh, my God. Yeah, what happens to that person? I have the same thing. They just tumble down the hill. Oh it's not as God. steep as you probably think it. It's like it's a cliff or anything. Yeah. But that'd be terrible if it was. Well, actually, uh, this did remind me, speaking of cliffs, this because uh, th- that, that cat track scenario, that is one of Kyler and I's. We're both... Big pansies. It, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it scary. A, I remember being scared of that. Pepper, oh, my, my daughter's God. scared of it. She's so worried about Ezra Flying just off starting off a, a cat yeah. track. Yeah. Well, there's this one little corner we do on one of the green runs, and it's totally fine. But if you didn't take the corner, it looks so steep, <laughs> and there's no chairlift on the bottom. I'm like, then I just give up and die down there. That's that's the end of you. Like, if I just go down. But, Your uh, kid's peeking off the side like, Daddy, like, I'm dead. <laughs> Just go. I'm already dead. I'm already dead. Don't. The dead, you seem fine. I'll be dead soon, though. <laughs> I'll be dead. Uh, it's, I'm getting cold. I'm getting colder. <laughs> you do a couple more runs. Dead, I can call someone. I just want to be dead. <laughs> Would you just let me be dead? <laughs> just like you're so frustrated. Find a new dad. <laughs> what? <laughs> just get up. No. Save yourself. Dad, you're only 10 feet down there. Fuck off <laughs> and let me die. Right. <laughs> that's the quit that's the quit moment right. everything's fine like they, like they have a I don't know how they got it but they have like one of those yeah. pool things they throw it down to you that has like oh. the inner tube on it uh-huh. like uh-huh. you just grab the rope <laughs> right. no just, I'll drown you keep hitting it and like, right. fl- like slapping it off to the side no just so frustrated <laughs> how'd your dad die frustration <laughs> He lost, his, he lost his temper. He gave up. He just gave up. What do you mean? He, yeah. got, he gets really frustrated. And we knew it would happen eventually. And he finally got so frustrated, he just gave up and died. <laughs> I, I, my brain is going crazy. <laughs> Where it just gets more and more complex. Now they have a helicopter. And you're only 10 feet off the cat track. <laughs> and like, there's all these guys trying to help you. No! No! I'm waving my ski at them. <laughs> get away from me! They get you in the helicopter and you jump back out. No! <laughs> you sit back down in the snow. Right, they trick me. Trying to get a hold of me, trying to run away from them, I actually run back up onto the cat trap. So they're like, now you're fine. I didn't want to be! And I just throw myself back off. Right. It's like chasing a, a like a creature, like the safety out of the road. You're trying to help them, but they can't. Right, and you like right. you get them off the road and he just runs back in and gets my life, my choice! <laughs> my life, my choice. <laughs> oh man, that was good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that, uh, but it, but it did. Then Kyler, he was talking about. Um, oh my God! Did you see the ski video? Okay. And then there is a video. Uh, I we found it. It was the top one on YouTube. If you just put like "dude skis off of cliff," okay, and it shows up first. I think it's about a minute long. But this guy kind of did what we're talking about, except for like, except for he didn't know the corner was there. Okay. He was just skiing along. I don't know enough about skiing to know why he was here. But there's a couple other tracks. I think yeah. This looks. This does look like it. But there, but it doesn't look okay. like a, it doesn't look like a run. No, oh, no, it's backcountry. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. they're not on a ski mountain. They must have gotten helied in oh, or hiked up. Because um, okay. you can see some tracks of people. Yeah, there's watch, a few other uh, yeah, tracks. walking, and it looks like yeah. I, I mean, there's just people that kind of dove around. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and this is crazy. This video where he clearly didn't map out his run, mm-hmm. and he's skiing along. You see a little berm, and then on. You don't know it's going to be on the other side. It's just a cliff. It was a 160-foot cliff. Right, yeah. And he didn't know he went over it <laughs> until like, he was going over it. Right. That might be it. This one says, uh, what, it's a, uh, yeah, didn't know, accidentally goes off a 150-foot yeah. cliff. Okay, so you get to hear him. He has his GoPro on. If you watch, it's a short video. Okay. In real time. Okay, so he's just going along. Okay. This is my absolute nightmare if I was to go off a run. Oh, shit. He's like, hey, okay, fine. Uh, just going to go over a little bump here. And oh, my God. Holy shit. 
Oh, and then he just hits. <laughs> now listen to him. He's, he's popped out the snow. Thank you. <laughs> Head hurts a little, and my ribs in the back. Yeah, lucky to be alive. I think I'm good. Look at those rocks behind him. Oh my but I, God. I just, I just love that. You know, I don't know why he beeped it out, but whatever. Yeah. But like, you, you go over, and then he's, oh fuck, I said, ah! right? and, and then just that look on his face when he wipes the snow away, like, oh, thank oh, you, shit. thank you, I'm alive. <laughs> Here I am. That's that is so scary. What a roller coaster of emotions. Oh, that'd be terrible. Uh, it, but the, <sighs> to, uh, I mean, there were. It was just foot marks up to there. It looked yeah. like it wasn't like ski or snowboard. Okay. So somebody walked up to that edge, probably just like the look off the cliff. And he interpreted and he that he interpreted as... it as like somebody went this way and then oh he gets shot off the God. fucking cliff. What a dummy. That's a, that's a whole other thing. I, I got sucked into a wormhole with those videos after seeing that one. Uh, just in Yosemite National Park two weeks ago, they call it Half Dome. Okay. And yeah, it's some, yeah, yeah. some cliff, you know, people, I don't know the term. People who do that, what is it called? Not freestyle, but um, f- nah, free climb. Yeah, free climb. Free climb. Solo go, climb. Yeah, yeah, solo climbs. And they go to those cliffs. It's a popular place for that. But then these guys, I guess they hiked up or maybe they helicopter up. It didn't say in the local, it's like LA's news channel. KTLA had this video. And they just brought their skis and then skied down, not the cliff part, but like the back dome part, okay. which is still super steep. Right. And they're going down under these rocks where the newscaster basically says that like, oh yeah, if you were to go a little bit too far to the right and go to those rocks, then, then you just die. <laughs> then you just go off the cliff. That's lava. <laughs> that's he's that's like, lava. You, you, we've all played the game before. Is lava? That's lava. But real life consequences. I never. Even when I was young, I was not that kind of adrenaline junkie. Mm-hmm. Where I'm like, oh, this is gonna be super fun. And you know, worst case scenario, if I slightly turn to the right a tiny bit more than I'm going to try to do, then I just die. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. Love you, mom. <laughs> Love you, mom. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing today. All you have to do is turn back and forth down the hill. And if you get any of those turns like the slightest bit wrong, then you just die. <laughs> It's not even that big of a deal. And you're like, totally dead. Okay, well, be careful. You got to be home. We got, we got uh, family coming over for, for dinner. Okay. <laughs> Bye. I'm going to go to a place that are not supposed to have skiers. <laughs> and we're going to get helicoptered in because we have our GoPros. And we're just going to go down a cliff. And we, you know, there's probably only like a 70% chance that we'll die. <laughs> yeah. And it should be a lot of fun. I was reading that article last weekend like where those 10 <laughs> people died. That's where we're going. The snow is great. I'm like, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Love you. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I'm, I'm glad I don't have that. Either. You're more like that than me, though. Yeah, but not quite. I have yeah. friends that are fucking insane. They just, I'm like, no, not that uh, much. Like, I would jump out of an airplane. You would. Yeah. I want yeah. to make you do it with me. I, I probably will. But, um, like, my brother has done it, and I have people that have done it. Like, I'm that level. Yeah. But I'm not, like, past that. Like, I, I get scared of avalanches. You wouldn't do, like, the Trava Pastrana and just jump out of an airplane <laughs> without a parachute. No. No. And then, and then just grab somebody else who has a parachute and hope it works out. Nope. Not me. <laughs> Not this guy. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our okay. next uh, section here. This is a listener edition of Dumb Dumb Idiots. Just healing in. Healing, he- into that healing in session. and out. <laughs> See ya, <you>, babe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this first story is coming in from Dummy Alex. Uh, he was trying to show off and he fucked it. Okay. Uh, this is a this is a great one. <laughs> so I think we, I think we all kind of have an example of this at some point in our life where you're trying to do something cool, yeah. and you just end up blowing it. Oh uh, yeah. Just not quite this bad. Okay. He goes, "Hey, you mushmouth motherfuckers." He said, "Suckers," <laughs> but uh, my mouth, you know. After yesterday's episode, I thought I'd share with you probably the dumbest thing I've ever done. So a couple years ago, I was at the Beacon Light Chevron in Boise, which you probably know which one I'm talking about. I do. Do you remember the Beacon Light? Over in Boise. Oh matter. man, um, yeah, I can't. Remember but I, right I, now. I, I can see the yeah. I can see the parking lot and everything. So he okay. goes. I was on my motorcycle, crotch rocket. <laughs> uh, I stopped for some gas, and right next to me there are some cute girls in a pickup doing the same. Okay. Cue the feeling of me feeling like a sexy badass in my leather riding jacket and cool jeans, thinking, "Oh yeah, these girls want me." <laughs> we exchanged smiles, even said hello to each other. They stopped and asked me what kind of bike I had. I'm sure people in the town over could probably smell the pheromones level, uh, the pheromone level <laughs> rising by the second. Obviously, my confidence was through the roof, and my dumbass decided I should give these two cuties a little show. So as I was leaving, I popped a little wheelie. As I pulled out of the parking lot, when I came down, my front tire did not land correctly, and oh, no. I ate shit right in front of about 20 people. Picked up my bike as fast as I could and rode off. By far the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. Fucked up my right leg, and I mean fucked it up. Listen to this. Later found out that I had a dislocated or had dislocated my knee, tore my calf muscle, oh my God. and broke my ankle in two spots. 
all over two chicks that didn't even know my name and obviously I had 0% chance with. Hope you guys got a laugh out of this as much as uh, as everyone and all of my friends do and tell Zach to clean my, or suck my clean ween two times. <laughs> hey, everyone's been telling Logan to suck their dick. Zach, <laughs> suck some dicks. Okay. I, I love that uh, he didn't realize that he had those injuries until afterwards <sighs> just because of the adrenaline. That embarrassment. And, and the embarrassment. Mm-hmm. That's so crazy. That, like, that is such a dude thing. I wish I could think, there are so many examples that I think are on the tip of my tongue of of being especially like late teens, yeah. really trying to impress some girl and just colossally failing. Yeah, and then yeah, it doesn't matter like how bad you hurt yourself. You're doing some trick. You just scamper away yeah. and lick your wounds somewhere else. Uh-huh. Uh, but that's crazy, like to that degree that he hurt his like that badly and was like, nope, I'm just gonna go, you know, get away and then I'll cry and go right. to the hospital. I mean, there's there's videos all over the place and experiences where like, uh, so I guess a, a girl too, I guess happened to see a bunch of dudes do it. Yeah, where they accidentally like shoot through their fucking foot. Wow. But they're with a bunch of dudes, so they have to like, oh, ow, ow, <laughs> oh, ow, no, no, no big deal. Oh, no problem. They, you know, play it off like it's fine. It's like, <laughs> you just shot your own foot, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and then they start crying when they get out of oh, sight and into the van. my God. A lot of my stories come from like BMXing or skateboarding. Yeah. You're trying to show off and you just fucking case it and you have to play it off like, oh, ow, oh, I'm yeah, fine. No big deal. And then you slowly crack make your way into your car and go home because <laughs> it hurts so fucking bad <laughs> you just, can't be a big baby and lay on the asphalt you gotta get up and go somewhere they just go to the hospital <laughs> like and i'm done <laughs> uh, sh- let's go to our next story then okay 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 so this is, this is coming our way from dummy wendy uh, i believe a spokane dummy she writes yabba dabba do fred and barney <laughs> perfect this story is about my dummy sister-in-law sent in with her permission And is a lesson in common sense not being so common. She happens to be one of the smartest people I know, but Mm. after this, we started to wonder about that. That that checks out. A few years back, we were hosting Christmas, and as as usual, sister-in-law was the last to arrive. The whole family was gathered in our living room waiting for ham and potatoes to be done uh, when sis bursts in the door and yells, How do you take a shower? (laughs) <laughs> we all stared at her confused, and she clarified that she wanted to know the steps we take when getting in the shower and getting ready for a shower. I start listing the steps in that order. I say, turn on hot water. Uh, when water is hot, add cold temperature. And then she started like, you know, saying the third one. Sure. And she screamed out, I've been taking cold showers my entire life. Okay, I'll explain here in a second. So it turns <laughs> out when she was talking to her brother-in-law earlier about something being wrong with her water temp and pressure because it is colder than usual, and she was checking it out, uh, when he turned on the water, as described above, she was flabbergasted. Apparently, when she showered, she would turn both the hot and the cold all the way up and then just deal with the cold, lukewarm water for the entire shower. What? Her new house must have had, uh, you know, even... Uh, new house must have had a more even water flow because she had been taking fully cold showers for months. She left out of the house a little bit smarter that day, and we still tease her about it. This every chance that we get, uh, but my niece is happy and finally have some warm baths. So that's oh my good. God, thanks for all the great content across all podcasts. I listen to each of them every week, uh, thanks, and even Wendy. got my husband to become a space lizard. Yes, Wendy King. Thanks, Wendy. Yeah. God, I, I, as I was thinking about how like <laughs> how dumb this person is doing that, I, I, I can't believe I haven't shared this before. But I've, have I ever talked about wearing the wrong size shoes for years uh, no, on the show? Not to my knowledge. No, oh no, okay, doesn't uh, ring a bell. Doesn't ring a bell. Okay. Oh, boy. this is perfect for is we dumb. Okay. And I just thought of it right now. I was trying to think of something like what did I like a weird thing. Mm-hmm. I was taught just basically growing up like the main ethos of our family is just don't complain. Yeah. And so, and, and also like my mom, like we didn't have a lot of money. So especially with like clothes and stuff, you just like deal with it. And mm-hmm. so like, I think, like, I think this is where this came from growing up. You just like, you're a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe your clothes don't fit quite right. Right. And you're just like, you just don't complain and you just deal with it. That's just what you do. Right. Somehow that got me to a place where I thought I was supposed to wear size 11s. Okay. I don't know if that was like, maybe I bought that and then complained. And then I was just like, no, just you're fine. And so basically I thought that your toes were supposed to be kind of mashed up. <laughs> In your shoe. And I wore size 11 until I was probably 36 years old. <laughs> not, even, not exaggerating. So this isn't even like a, this isn't even a new thing. Or no, this no, wasn't no. even like, a, like something that, in grade school. No, this went on for about 20 years. Right. When, I, when I started wearing size 11s, till I finally actually went to a place where they measured your feet like a running store instead of just buying random sneakers. <laughs> and she went... <laughs> I might have been 38 even actually this is so fucking was ridiculous was this last week no this wasn't last okay. week but it wasn't that I think I was like 36 37 38 okay and so it was like literally the first time that I went to like a nice shoe store like mm-hmm. for running shoes because I wanted to actually yeah I wanted to that's how it started I wanted to try and get into like jogging and uh, and they got out this like fancy shoe measurer and then it was like size 12 and I'm like nah that's not right 
I wear 11. And she's like, no, it's like this. She's like, it says 12 right here. <laughs> Listen, bitch, I'm the one holding the scale. I know how this works. And you're like, nah, it's nah, not 11. Nah. Put it back. It's broken. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so then she gets me for the first time in my life. She gets me a 12 and I put it on. I was like, holy shit. <laughs> I'm like, that feels amazing. Do you think that that has something to do with your fungus ass toe? Oh, maybe. Which, which is, which is almost the... better now, by the way. Uh, woo. <laughs> but maybe it's all mashed up and it's like, you just don't care about your feet at all. Yeah. <laughs> but then I was like, oh my God, this is the most comfortable shoe I've ever put on in my life. And she's like, well, yeah, it's the right size. <laughs> you dummy. And then, and then ever since, ever since then, I'm like, this is the greatest. <laughs> like shoes are like, I used to, used to take my shoes off at the end of the day because my feet would hurt uh-huh. because they were fucking mashed <laughs> right. and a shoe that didn't. And I did that for about 20 years. And now you just want to leave your shoes on. They feel so good. Oh my God, I feel so great. <laughs> I could have been so much faster when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, have been, and I could have been a better athlete if I would have wore the right shoe size. You'd have bigger clown feet, though. I would have, been, I would have had bigger clown feet. Flop, 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 flop. So, Flopping around. So that was my my dumb thing. <laughs> that I just good. It, it just went on for so, like, and then Lin- Lindsay was, like, blown away. Uh-huh. I just, like, what? <laughs> you wore a full size too small for your entire adult life and just never thought maybe I should at least try something bigger? <laughs> right. And she's like, you're supposed to have a little room at the end. I'm like, no one told me. <laughs> no, I never brought, brought it up. No one ever brought it but up. But it, it is super weird how there are these habits that, I mean, whether it's like the shoe size thing yeah. or just things that happen, you know, in private yeah. that you figure out like a different life skill or like the shower thing. Right. Like no one's there showing you how right. to take a shower. You're in there by yourself. So you've just been doing it one way or another. And I remember I had this, uh, I, know it's, I know we talk a lot about dicks and we're going to talk about them again. <laughs> So yeah. uh, <laughs> I didn't really think about this until I had a conversation with my brother. Mm-hmm. And we started talking about like how you hold your dick. Like when you have to go pee. <laughs> sure. Uh, and, he, and he was like, how do you hold it? Like, do you just hold it like this? Right. Like, just like a hose. Yeah. Like you're holding a hose. Yeah. Or do you hold it like a cigarette where it goes between your front two fingers? What? Uh-huh. And you hold it like that. And I was like, oh, I hold my dick like a cigarette. And he goes, what? oh, that's weird. Yeah. And he goes, what? And he goes, that's fucking crazy. He goes, so do all my friends. He goes, I don't. I was like, wait, what? I was like, how do you hold it? <laughs> then we started holding each other's sticks. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> and then we're like, what the shit? And then we started like asking all of our friends and he goes, t- everyone just holding their dick different. Either hold it like between their front like two fingers. Zach, cigarette. how do you hold your dick? With five hands. Five hands? Five hands. Oh, he just fists it. He's like all five fingers. But just weird things like that. that you just, no one's showing me how to hold a dick. <laughs> I developed a technique just, just to, and this is probably kind of gross but it was like when you're, out, when, you're, when you're out somewhere and you don't have access to like wash your hands mm-hmm. so I just got good to like not be touching my junk as much I, I usually don't touch my dick when I pee why, I just, I just why dr- would you I just drop my boxers and then it hangs out and I pee and then I just pull them back over right so if there's no soap and I don't wash my hands well I, d- I didn't touch my dick anyway well if I don't hold mine it gets drips in the water hey hey, hey. <laughs> Don't you hate it when you go out in the lawn and like you just you just mowed it right, and, and you're you, standing there looking at your work and you get like grass stains on your dick? <laughs> Don't you hate yeah, that? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought that was fascinating. And now there's yeah. there's more people like there's I I've I don't know if I believe them, but there are stories of people that sit on the like the toilet backwards and they poop facing like in. Like they yeah, take their pants where, off. Where would that come from? Like? I don't know, because they thought that that's how you did it. And no one ever showed them any any other different way. That's like a little kid who poops in the urinal. <laughs> And it's like, well, this is, this is a toilet. Is this the no, point? it's a little bit different. <laughs> Slightly different. <laughs> oh, don't, don't drink out of that bidet. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> All right. Well, we do have uh, one more story for okay. Dumb Dumb Idiots Listener Edition this week. And this was sent in by Dummy DJ. What is up, DCOM and Joe Dick? Loyal dumb space peep here. DJ Dolman writing in to tell you about my dumb story of the year so far. I start this off by saying we have an on and off mice problem where we live out in the boonies and it gets worse typically as the winter approaches since they're trying to find a warm place to nest. Yeah. Can relate. I have have mice in my fucking garage every winter. I hate it. I hate killing them. Yeah. It's not a killer. And it's sad and they don't kill them and you have to kill them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Anyway. Mm -hmm. So a favorite spot for them is underneath the dishwasher because it is warm and this posed a problem since I have constantly have to unbolt the bottom part and then, you know, put traps underneath it and then get it back. So eventually I just left the bottom unbolted for easy access since it stayed in the place fairly well on just the brackets. This wasn't a problem until recently when the panel shifted and got bent uh, when the door was opened. So, of course, I didn't have the original screws because who keeps that shit and decided to repair it using self-tapping screws in place of them. What I didn't realize that the screws were entirely too long and I ended up drilling a hole straight into the inside of the dishwasher. <laughs> so a few days later, my wife realized there was a puddle of water on the floor after running it uh, and me and her dad <laughs> set about trying to fi- fix the problem. It wasn't until after uh, we had pulled the whole thing out and ran it to find a leak and then realized the whole scope of my idiocracy. 
He was baffled as to where the leaks were coming from until I looked at him with a pit in my stomach and said, I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> as I explained what I did. And he just looked at me with a face of pity, confusion, and what the fuck? So some patchwork and a few days of curing time. Uh, it's working fine, but I don't think I'll ever live this one down. Sorry, not sorry for the long email. Love everything you guys do. Three out of five stars. Don't be as dumb as me, DJ. Oh, thanks, DJ. Oh, boy. We've I mean, all, if, anyone, there. if anyone has tried to use tools before... And you've been there. To, you've, you've fucking been here. Mm -hmm. You made some. You made some things a lot worse. That, yeah, that one is super. I mean, that's bad. I haven't done that one yet, but I my gutters just fall off my house. I don't know what it is. Like for the first four years, every right. winter they would get bent. They'd get ice dams. They try to get ripped off my fucking house. Okay. So a few winters back, this happened. They yeah. it was a bad one. They came off the front, off the back, off the garage. Okay. And at this point, I said, fuck it. And I just ripped the ones off the garage and fold them up and threw them in the fucking trash. <laughs> it's like, fuck these things. I'm not fixing it. Okay. Guess what? Our garage doesn't have gutters anymore. I'm not doing this shit. And then I, uh, I spent an entire weekend putting the gutters back up on the running boards yeah. that go along the side of the house. And I knew when I was doing it, I was doing it wrong. Right. Like I was cutting all the corners. Uh, I was just lining up the, the nails that have already been in there that fell out in the first place. Yeah. And then just pounding them re back into the, <laughs> into the stuff. I was just getting them back up as fast as I could. Right. And like every now and again, I put like in a longer screw and just move on and uh. just got them back up there. And even though I knew I was doing it wrong, yeah. um, you wouldn't be surprised to know like two days later, they all ripped off the house again. <laughs> so frustrating. I wasn't mad at all. I was pumped. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then I guess like I guess like paid somebody to help me. I was like, I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> Fuck this. But I, ah. I knew what I was doing and still did it. And uh it was it was a huge waste of time. It it, it took me a long time to learn that it, it is often cheaper to pay somebody to come do a repair. Mm -hmm. Because what you don't think, and if you let your like especially like I think like the stereotypical male ego like drive you like, well, there's a, a guy I should be able to do this. Yeah. And it's like, well, you have, yeah, but since you don't do it all the time, you have to buy all the tools that you're probably never going to use again. Right. In, in some cases, like to get this thing going and then you're not going to do it as well. It's going to look like shit and it's going to take all this time because it's a new skill you're trying to figure out. And if you right. just would like pay an expert on their off hours to swing by or whatever, get get a little extra cash to right. come knock this project out, yep. it would cost less and look way better. Oh, I mean, plumbing and electrical stuff uh, or flooring. Yeah. Like just trying to get the tools. And, to yes. do it and you're like oh cool like yeah be five hundred dollars in floor shit yep. you're like i should <laughs> what am i doing <laughs> mine was sheetrock oh yeah uh th there are people like they're such good sheet rockers like they're so amazing they, at it. that's all they do whole industry yeah and it's like there's <laughs> like an artistry to it mm -hmm. like they can really like sand it in. and if you've never done sheetrock before the sanding it gets this fine dust over everything it's so hard to get out of all your stuff i had this house i lived in years ago i i, I don't even remember how i knocked a hole in one of the walls in the sheetrock. So now I have to figure out how to like patch it. I and know how you did. <laughs> just doing something stupid. <laughs> and, and it was too big just to get a little bit of like putty. Yeah. You know, whatever. So I had to like get a whole new uh, a sheet of sheetrock. But it, but it wasn't big enough to completely take up the sheet. So I had to like, you know, try and cut it with yeah. the razor knife and do all that stuff. And then I put it in there and I don't get the right screws and the screws are kind of popping out a little bit. And then I have to then try and hammer those in and then putty over it. <laughs> and then the seams, it was so obvious and it didn't go in quite the same as it should have the rest of it. And so, and then I couldn't blend it. Right. It looked so fucking bad like the hole looked better and i spent so much time <laughs> yeah because i got all these tools for sheetrock stuff and i tried to do this fancy patch and i let it dry and then i would sand it and then i'd have to put more shit on and then re-sand it yeah. all for it to just be like when you walked in the house it was like what the first thing your eye saw like wow this giant uh rectangle mark <laughs> who covered oh. the dog hole <laughs> right, right the dog door well, that's a weird what? place for a dog door <laughs> god damn it <laughs> and then i found out that some of the sheetrocks like on the edge it actually kind of tapers down slightly okay so that you can match the seams, right. you can put this, and it doesn't, and it looks seamless. And I didn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. Now you can do YouTube, which will help you a little bit. But even still, <laughs> yeah, you're you still have to buy all the stuff. <laughs> it's not it's something you haven't done before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just just let just let it go. Just have just you know, if you have a father in law, if you have somebody, a mother in law, it doesn't matter. Somebody who's like, I can do that. Yep, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Don't be and like, Nah, I got it. Right. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. Don't even try. Just don't. <laughs> just don't. I'm gonna start a construction company. Just don't. Just don't. Just don't construction. <laughs> right. But I, <laughs> but it's it's like me showing up and I don't construction. <laughs> like they pay for me to show up and I'm like, I don't do this. <laughs> like this isn't my. I talk into a microphone. They're like what? How's huh? that gonna help me? I didn't say that. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said I just don't. You I didn't hire me. Right. I th I thought you were gonna go the other way where it was just insulting your customers. Oh. Like, oh, you think you can do that? Just don't. Stop. You don't know fucking anything about construction. <laughs> I know that's why I hired you. I know, and that's why I'm here. That's why so I'm still you stay the fuck out of my way <laughs> right. and just don't. Just don't. Okay. No, I'll, I'll make your house look nice. Throw All a right. Throw a t-shirt. 
<laughs> you just done construction? Just a really needlessly aggressive construction company. <laughs> You think, you think Shoot her in the stomach with a t-shirt gun, <laughs> from, like from 10 feet away. <laughs> you want your house to look nice? Well, you're too stupid to do it. And that's why you've hired us. <laughs> what? That's the commercial. That's the commercial. For Just Listen, Down Construction. I know what you want. You want your house to look nice, or maybe you want a new house. But the problem is, you're fucking stupid. <laughs> that's why you hire us. You can't do it. Just don't. You're no good. We are. <laughs> hire Just Down Construction. Just like, <laughs> God. I bet you that would work. <laughs> I wonder if it You're would. Like, Fuck, he's right. God, he's right. Like the, somehow in thirty seconds, you can just emasculate, just like beat somebody down enough where they hire you. Like they kind of feel confident when they start watching the commercial. By the end, like I am a piece of shit. I am, and man. I do want nice things. I was going to give him my house <laughs> right. at this point. God damn, I'm an idiot. <laughs> uh, thanks everybody for sending those in. Uh, we're going to take a look at the dumbest thing I was able to find online, and we'll do that right now. Thanks. This was sent in first by Dummy Eric, and Eric? I didn't even know that they did this. And I will have a story about, I, I actually have seen this, but I did not know that they did this particular thing uh, to chicken's feet, when okay. they, or rooster's feet when they're fighting. Anyway, a rooster kills Indian man during band cockfight. Okay. So they take these little three-inch blades, and they tie them to their feet. That's horrific. And it got out beforehand and sliced this guy's main artery. So a man was killed by a rooster with a blade tied to its leg. During an illegal cockfight in southern India, police said, bringing focus on a practice that continues in some Indian states despite de a decades-old ban. So a rooster with a three-inch knife tied to its leg what? fluttered in panic and slashed its owner, 45-year-old Tangula Satish, in the, groin, in the groin last week, Inspector Havin uh, said on Sunday. So the incident occurred in place that I don't even know, uh, La Lavanur village in Telangana state. So according to Javan, Sadis was injured while he prepared the rooster for fight. Sadis was hit by the rooster knife in the groin and started bleeding heavily, the officer uh. said, adding that the man died on the way to the hospital. And the article goes on to say that this isn't, this isn't like uncommon. Wow. Uh, they had an incident last week with another rooster that like cut a guy's jugular oh. when it fluttered before the fight. Oof. Uh, another one died when it like stabbed him in the stomach. Uh, I don't feel sorry for these people. Right. So... It's just so like, crazy. Why are you taping a little switchblade to a rooster's leg to have it to kill other roosters? Just making them extra, extra mm, scary, right? It's like a like a more mobby, like Rambo ish. What a weird, <laughs> what a weird thing to get into. Where it's like, hey, you you want to go out and watch these roosters with razor blades tied to their feet, slice mm -hmm. each other to pieces? No, you fucking psychopath. <laughs> I don't. But do you want to come to dinner right. like a normal fucking human? I don't know. You want? Yeah, you want to watch a fucking movie like a, like a normal? Uh, yeah. Come on, just try it. Come on, just try watching the roosters no. cut each other up. Ja Javine, leave me alone. <laughs> right. Go. Right. Bye, bye. Get out of here. Get out of here, man. That's like dog fights and th stuff. Oh, see, it's yeah. Like, why? And I have. Um, I'm sure the statute of limitations have, have gone on this. I've been to a cockfight. You've been and to a cockfight? I fucking hated it. I like How it. did you I mean, end up in a cockfight? I can't give you details. I'm okay. gonna get everybody in trouble. Okay. But I uh, I mean if you if you thought I was having a hard time with mice in my garage, right. I didn't have a good time at, at the cockfight either. <laughs> I ended up just leaving. Yeah, it's so I'm sure sad. It's, sad. it's so sad. I you hated just, it. You just watch these things tear each other apart. Yeah, people I, around like, <laughs> Yeah, you go. And it starts that way. Right. And then it just gets super sad. I don't like wow. it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. Why'd I bring it up? <laughs> I guess like I guess like risk going to jail for a story I don't even want to fucking talk about. I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is like I don't mind MMA at all. Mm -hmm. Because those people, like, that's what they want to do. Right. Like, we, we've trained. We want to fight each other. I don't care. You want, you want to, like, hit somebody in the face and be hit in the face all day, like, you know, all day long. Okay, fine. Right. Like, the, you, you can make that choice as a human. What I don't like about animal fights is, like, they don't want to be fighting. Mm -hmm. Like they're just like they're just like minding their own business, and then someone's like, "Hey, get in that fucking cage!" And then someone else is like grabbing another animal. Now, now, come on, try and kill each other. Why? <laughs> they tie their legs together so they right. think the other one's yanking on them the whole time. Even right. if they try to get away, right? Because yep. we, we got money riding on this. Uh -huh. And what a weird thing to be like. That's your job. Like you're the cockfight. You know, uh, I don't know, coordinator, <laughs> whatever. You're the <laughs> promoter. What do you do for a living? I, I, I'm like, a cockfight coordinator. <laughs> right. Like they they asked my wife like oh no I know I'm a uh, I'm a nurse practitioner overnight at the hospital what's your husband do oh he organizes cockfights <laughs> oh what uh, excuse me what I'm sorry what was oh, that no, makes good money <laughs> yeah come on oh, okay whatever puts food on the table no not really actually <laughs> <laughs> not really actually Here, cops <laughs> no, right, right. <laughs> oh wow yeah wild wild well mm -hmm. I'm glad I'm glad that the, the uh, I'm glad the cockfights got the the roosters got a little bit of revenge there I'm glad I've only they seen one sliced a couple people I know. Don't and they, if, if one lesson here is just don't tie a knife to a rooster, right? I, I think there. 
That's got to be taught. Let's lesson. take that even further. Don't tie a knife to literally any animal. Mm-hmm. I can't think of a single situation where it's like, that was a good idea to tie that knife like to cat. that cat or that dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> like a cute monkey? <laughs> right. Can like, I give him a switchblade? Sure, that monkey has a knife. <laughs> Come here. Uh, give me a hug. <laughs> That monkey just saved the whole family. Thank God someone gave it a knife. <laughs> right. Nope. Never. Never. I've never heard that one time. All right. Let's take a look at things you found this week. Yeah. Thank you. I get no respect in real life. Always am upset. So I let them know I hate them on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to go to an, uh, a very common item that almost everybody has. What is it? A vacuum. I have one. Yeah, I have one too. <gasps> wow, look at us. I, I bet I bet most of the dummies listening have vacuums. <laughs> one person's like, no, no, no I don't. <laughs> you, wow, <laughs> wow, privileged life you guys live in. <laughs> and then common vacuum brand Hoover. So we're going to Amazon to look at the comment section, or the reviews, I'm sorry, the ratings. Okay. Of the Hoover Max Life Pro Pet Swivel HEPA Media Vacuum Cleaner. Okay. Bagless upright for pets, hair and home, black, UH7422, zero PC. Okay. And it's the very m- number, number one bestseller Okay, on Amazon. Uh, 4,102 ratings. The overall rating is four and a half stars out of five. Uh, you know, it's pretty simple, quick, and easy pickups. Here's the little pictures of it. Uh, nice <laughs> extensions. Uh, you can get your, your know, table, your couch. God, I love stock vo- photos. Mm-hmm. I love them so much. <laughs> she, she's, she seems pretty happy. <laughs> Yay! I got it. <laughs> I did it. Uh, perfect for pets, it says. Powerful cleaning on all floors. Sealed allergen with HEPA media filtration. And then, uh, you know, just some, some nicer pictures. It, lo- it looks like a solid vacuum. It does. G- good price point of... Um, $199. And the weight, this is import, important for later, 17 pounds. All right. So not too bad for a mm-hmm. vacuum. And then, you know, just kind of looking at some, some uh, to get an idea where the price point fits in for vacuums. There are cheaper vacuums for sure, but there are also much more expensive vacuums. Yeah. Way you know, over that. Here's like a $800 SIBO automatic X4, another $800 Lindhaus, an $800 some generic <laughs> A-Fight. I, I love how like if those $800 vacuums, yeah. like just like one person bought it. Or right, it. like, cause no one's spending that much money on a fucking vacuum. Yeah, that, that is why. Right, <laughs> I'm sure it's great. I mean, here's a pet one for seven ninety eight that does right. have a little bit more four hundred and eight yeah, ratings, it but it's like you know, that's, those are expensive vacuums. These are all like close to eight hundred dollars, mm-hmm. and you could find some industrial ones that are like two thousand dollars. Yeah. Uh, so I just want to give an idea of like the overall state of vacuums on <laughs> we Amazon. Just, a crash course on the vacuum market, <laughs> right? So here's here's the one stars. Uh, Sarah Holland writes one star. Please read before buying. Okay. And this is just from January 6th this past this year. Do not buy this vacuum. I did so much research on vacuums before I bought this one, and I am so disappointed. Where to even start with why this vacuum doesn't even deserve the one star I have to give it? I gave this vacuum a fair chance. I bought it over three months ago, and my house is all hardwood floors, except the bathrooms, which are tile. <laughs> the biggest issue is the lack of succession. It is horrible. Hmm. I mean, it will literally roll right over dirt and derbies. I don't know what derbies are supposed to be. Sometimes, and don't even bother trying to vacuum along the edges of the floor where the floorboards and floor meet because it does absolutely nothing. Derbies was not in our crash course lesson. Right. You didn't, we didn't I, get that. We didn't cover derbies. <laughs> I don't know what the hell she's talking about. Right. But what really is ridiculous is the fact that it literally does not suck up any of the dog hair <laughs> when I vacuum the area rugs. Look at the pictures. This is what happens every time I vacuum the area rugs. It just balls up all the hair and doesn't get completely entwined in the roll. The third photo is to show just how much dog hair. It's still on my rug after vacuuming. For the price I paid, this is one of the biggest waste of money (laughs) I have ever spent, and that is saying a lot. (laughs) Add in all the minor nuances, such as how the cord is on the right side, but like most people, I am right-handed, so I am used to pushing the vacuum with my right arm and holding the cord with my left hand, but that is the pain in a rear because the cord naturally pulls to the opposite side I am holding it with and will get caught or wraps around the vacuum head. It is just one of the tedious features that makes it so much more frustrating. (laughs) It is also difficult to maneuver and is cheaply made. It literally makes a clicking sound every time I pull it back. Very frustrated and upset because all I have done here is wasted money and given myself a daily workout. Do not buy this vacuum. (laughs) There's just so much energy invested in this vacuum. I am left-handed. In, in the real right. world. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Ne- I've never thought to myself, oh, oh man, I wish that this le- vacuum was left-handed. <laughs> right. I've, I've never known there's a difference between a left-handed and a right-handed vacuum. <laughs> like, I just, like, put the cord where the fucking cord goes. Right. <laughs> just the energy. Just, I mean, come on. <laughs> it's just what? Like... And then... <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. And then you look at, okay, some pictures. Uh, okay, yeah, it bald, but like that's a lot of hair. Clean it up. Clean it up. So maybe sweep a little bit on the heart. I mean, I don't know what is shedding that much <laughs> if they're it vacuuming. Does a, it does a terrible job picking up uh, at the wolves, at right. the wolf center. Right. You go inside the wolf cages and it, it clogs every time. I'm frustrated that my $200 vacuum, listen, I have 97 dogs <laughs> right. and all of them have a special disease where they shed three times as much as a normal dog. <laughs> and I bought a $200 vacuum and it, <laughs> after running it 45 days in a row, it will clog on the hair, on the area rugs. <laughs> I, I picture you sending in a pic uh, uh, of her sending in one of the snap photos right. and it's her just like with the vacuum on the dog. Like <laughs> the, the main part. It's like, why does it keep right. clogging? So I, run a, <laughs> I run a dog grooming business and I specialize in taking all the hair off of dogs. Half the way through each of the dogs, right. my vacuum will clog. Right. <laughs> what, what gifts? What Do gifts? not buy a vacuum. I, or if, the only way it can be more uh, ridiculous right. is if she was like a farmer. She goes, I'm shearing the sheep. And every time I try to put the, the sheep roll in or the sheep roll inside of this vacuum, it clogs. What what gifts? Listen, I am a professional sheep rancher right. and I don't have the money for a proper uh, shearing machine. This so I got a $200 Huber vacuum right. and after shearing only four sheep, it would clog on the wool. What gifts? And the cords on the left side. And the cord is on the wrong side. <laughs> How many times do I have to shear the sheep with my vacuum hoover? <laughs> right. uh, just, One star. Uh, so I thought that was a little ridiculous. Yeah. Now, this next person thinks there's some kind of conspiracy going on here. All right. Robert M., one star, something smells. Hmm. I called Hoover to activate my warranty. I was told there was no such model number. <laughs> I rechecked the model number, and it was what I stated. Hmm. What I noticed was that the model label had a bubble in it like it had been replaced. <laughs> What's going on, Amazon? My attorney told me not to return it. <laughs> this guy's going to fucking take Jeff Bezos down over one $200. Amazon. I just love that he thinks there's some massive conspiracy right. where they're just like, we're going to make these $50 vacuums. Hey, guys, get in here. Do not do not fucking tell anybody I'll kill. We're going to make these $50 vacuums, but we're going to buy a whole bunch of Hoover labels. Right. And we're going to sneak them on there and we're going to put it on the Hoover store. And, no one, and we're going to make so much fucking vacuum money. <laughs> <laughs> and Robert M can suck our dick if he right, finds out. Right, he exactly. can just, it's like, what a weird paranoia where you think the Amazon people have conspired with the Hoover company to make, oh, to, to switch labels. Right. Okay. That's so weird. That was, I thought it was weird. Oh, what other things is he calling his attorney about? Right. He's, oh my, who's this a, guy's attorney? Right. Where he's like, hey, got another one for you. Check this out. My Hoover vacuum label. <laughs> well, right, Had a bubble in it. Lay it on me, buddy. What is it? <laughs> right, right. Are you, you going to take action? We're just building our case, bud. <laughs> We're just building our case. <laughs> he's just doing the same thing. He's like, yeah, hey, I guess, like, takes notes and throws them in the, <laughs> sets them on fire immediately after getting off the phone. Hey, uh, get a load of this. <laughs> Bought a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. Mm -hmm. Got home. Opened it. Uh, oh, uh, when I was buying it, mm -hmm. this, they had a hard time scanning it. They had to manually put in the code. Mm -hmm. That was weird. I get home. It tasted a little weird. How weird? I, I don't know, but like just like a little bit different. So you tell me. <laughs> Are they? They're trying to get pull a fast one. All right, we'll put on the list. We'll put, put it on the list. On the list. Okay. okay. Cool Ranch Doritos, not quite <laughs> Cool Ranchy. Right. Uh, Checker had a problem. Needs more cool. Needs more cool. <laughs> add more cool. Add a little less ranch. Hoover vacuum people uh, putting on fake labels. <laughs> and like this weird list of the Halloween mask company. <laughs> right. uh, eye hole wasn't quite big enough. The milk seemed suspicious. Batteries. Milk tasted sour. Uh, <laughs> batteries <laughs> didn't last as long as they should. Bowling have. balls. <laughs> right. Just like okay, no, we'll get them. Bowling ball was too light. <laughs> Right. Just weird shit. <laughs> right. Luggage was too, clicked too loud. Like, what's going on with this? Whistle wasn't high pitched enough. <laughs> like all these weird. Okay, uh, this one they had ridiculous expectations for this vacuum. Sunshine, one star, uh, not for human hair. Mm -hmm. This vacuum really sucks in a good way. It has the most vacuum strength of any machine we have ever owned. Oh, and we're really old. And it's our first vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> but I love how they start this one star. I know. Super dirt, weird. That, dirt that gets anywhere near it goes right in. In a bad <laughs> bingo. Bingo. In a bad way, we hoped that it would handle long human hair as well as pet hair. Think Afghan hound. But it doesn't. Um, yeah, because it's a fucking vacuum, the way the vacuums work. Uh, the hair gets twisted and jammed around the end of the brush roll. And eventually slows it down. Uh huh. Uh huh. Causing the brush roll drive belt to slip and make a burning rubber smell. No better than our old Sears vacuum. The fix is to remove the brush roll, six long Phillips head screws, cut the twisted hair off the roll with scissors or razor, then replace the whole works, including the six screws. In this process, you get quite intimate with the dirty hair. And of course, that fix is only temporary. 
until the next use of the vacuum. As I write this, UPS just showed up to take the machine back. I'm not sure that Amazon will accept it back after it's been used once, but we have no use for it. We've already ordered a different machine, which I'm confident will do better. This is just a ridiculous, like, you start off saying it is the strongest vacuum we've ever owned, Mm. but it still won't get human. They just don't understand. Like, I don't know a lot about vacuums, but I know enough. The spinning mechanism, I don't know how the fuck you can't understand that a long, long hair, like a rope or fishing line, (laughs) it's not going to go in the tube because the brush rolls it up tightly. (laughs) Like, like a, like a, you know, as an avid fisherman. Exactly. As one does. Uh, But but like a fishing, like fishing line in your reel, it's like, of course, that's how that stuff works. Right. When you spin a little string around something, it just wraps, like, I don't know. It's just such a weird thing to not understand. Outside of like a, like a shop vac. Or like, right. a, yeah, or if one of the vacuums like they have at the barbershop where they scoop it over to the counter and then push the button so it sucks it up from the bottom. Right. Like it's sucking. It's not a, it's not spinning. Yeah. It's just sucking the hair in. Right. Every vacuum ever gets hair stuck in it if it has a yeah. little twisty thing Long on the bottom. Long hairs. <laughs> Always. Yes. So this person, like they know that it's a brush roll, a rolling <laughs> mechanism. Right. And they're just determined to find one of those type vacuums that handles long human hair. Uh-huh. Fucking sunshine, you will never fucking find that. Because that's that thing does not exist. In the commercials where they set up the different examples yeah. of like it can do this, it can suck up cereal. Like or whatever it is. <laughs> right. Like she's she's lying. Right. Yeah. We we only used it one time. No. And she ran a lot of tests then. Because mm-hmm. it was the strongest she's ever had. It did fine mm-hmm. with this, did fine with dirt. It's like she yep. had all these different little patches set up. Right. Not so good with human hair. One star. Like she says he's different all laid out in the kitchen floor. Right. Sounds great with coffee grounds. Check. Does great with coffee grounds. But what's weird is if you try and use it to vacuum up, I don't know, 500 feet of rope, it just doesn't quite work the way you'd think. Right. Listen, we have a yo-yo factory <laughs> and we're constantly having yo-yo- yo-yos explode and all the string gets uh-huh. it's scattered around our floor. And we wanted just one fucking spinning <laughs> roll vacuum right. that would pick up all that string. And guess what? It winds its way around the spool and gets stuck <laughs> every time. Things get a little crazy at the kite factory. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> all, all the string that we cut, and there is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards of right. string on the floor. We just need one rolling vacuum <laughs> to suck it up. Is that too much to ask? Listen, I'm already stressed out. I have a tough job. I'm the person who has to uh, wind up rolls of thread. <laughs> I probably wind up a thousand rolls of thread a day to doll, sell to the doll thread hair store. factory. At the doll hair factory. <laughs> Sometimes I drop them on the floor, and I just need a vacuum that will just get up all that thread, but not wrap it in any way, shape, or form. Do you have anything? Do you have anything? No? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Not this vacuum. That's what it is. <laughs> Okay, so next one. Jennifer Lambert, zero stars. Stop working in less than five minutes. Okay, and, and this is just, this isn't crazy dramatic, but this is something I see a lot of one stars that I wanted to use this as an example of. Okay. After hours of reading reviews on this product, hours, mm. I was happy to finally place the order, excited to learn that it would arrive in two days. It did arrive two days later. I opened it and I put it together as soon as I got home from work. Was very pleased with the handling and the power of the vacuum. I swept one long runner about 10 foot by two foot. Very pleased with the results. I moved on to the next runner. The brush stopped turning as I finished with the second runner. Turned it off and then on again. While it did a fantastic job on both runners, this vacuum does me little good without a brush that works. Mm -hmm. I took apart the bottom to expose the belt and it was fine. I will be returning this product as soon as possible. (coughs) Okay, so you got a dud. Right, it's broken. It fucking happens. Like, this product that you think works so great... The second, like, like, it, yeah, you got a dud. It just stops working. Okay, if, but then you go and just leave a one star review, and then just like it just you discredit the one star as you're leaving the review. Give them a chance to replace it. Yeah, give them a chance to replace it, and then if they send something back, or if they won't take it back, then there's a problem. That's when you leave the one star review. Then come on in. Right. If you right. get if you get something new and it's working great, and then it just has a random malfunction, and you haven't even given them a chance to fix it, fuck you for leaving a one star review. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, I can agree with that for sure. Okay, this one cracked me up. Quick one. Okay. Jay Fritz, and there's several of these. The weight. I like the vacuum, but it was too heavy for me. Had to return it. Well, you know what? Then you should have fucking looked at the specs. 17 pounds, dipshit. <laughs> right. And if you can't handle a 17-pound vacuum, you need to fucking redo your whole life. Yep, you got a, a new house. You need to accept that you're not strong enough to work vacuums. <laughs> Or get a very different workout routine. I picture them like, uh, for whatever, it's one of those tiny, tiny, like, uh, dust devils. <laughs> they have to do their whole, whole house. That's all you can pick up. They're one. not strong enough! <laughs> it takes them weeks. Right. And by the time he's done, it's already dirty again. Right. Like on the other side where he didn't, where he started. And this is annoying. I don't know if he, you know, I mean, he may have some limitations. Right. But that's not the vacuum's fault. It's not. 
It's not. Mm -mm. It's like, well, okay, well, then you're not strong enough to do a vacuum. You got to get someone else to okay. vacuum for you. Then don't, yeah, don't buy vacuums. Mm -hmm. uh, this next one, opposite, Stephanie Arnold, very lightweight, one star. This vacuum is so light and weight and works great, one star. <laughs> Just thought that was funny. <laughs> Clearly a little mistake here. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and then this was my favorite one. This is just like, this person's insane. All right. Susie, one star. Good looking sweeper, but don't buy if you have an animal that sheds fur. I just love, don't look ahead on this one, Joe. Okay. And don't read ahead because I love the last line. All right. But I'll don't be tempted to look at okay, it. Okay, I'll, I'll, stay, I'll stay in the now. That's why I picked it. Needed a sweeper that wouldn't clog up when you sweep. I have a golden doodle dog and hope this sweeper, since made for pet hair, would not clog. Wrong, at least for me. Clogged first time, used it after only sweeping five minutes. And golden doodles are not heavy shedding dogs. Well, yeah, they're actually not supposed to shed at all. Mm -hmm. they're not, you don't, and they don't have fur, they have mm -hmm. hair. They do not shed clumps of fur. And there was not fur shedding visible on the carpet. Clogged first time, and used it. <laughs> and am not even sure where it is clogged. Need to be taken apart to find where the clog even is. Would make a good sweeper if you don't have a dog. <laughs> I would give it person who doesn't have dog or cat that is mechanical enough to take it apart to find clog and clear it. If you have no animals that shed, maybe a great sweeper for you. <laughs> I have one of the littlest shedding breeds of dogs and it did not work for me at all. Sorry, but you asked for my opinion. <laughs> Nobody asked for your opinion, Susie. I get the feeling that no one ever asked for your opinion on anything. <laughs> I just love that. that you didn't even want, she didn't even want to write this view. Sorry. <laughs> You asked for my opinion. You forced, they? forced my hand. Did they? It's Did like someone, like they probably sent her an optional survey. And that's what she's, oh, I guess. <laughs> well, you asked. I wasn't going to say anything, but buckle up. <laughs> Cracks the knuckles. Right. Yeah. Fuck your vacuum. <laughs> I I bite my tongue. What a weird thing of like, <laughs> listen, I hate, I, I don't like doing this. <laughs> but you asked. It's, it's like yeah. that weird like customer feedback email where the, where the people don't understand that it's just spam, <laughs> that it's auto-generated, and they, and they react as if a real human is like, hey, I hate to bother you, right. but I really, really need your feedback. My life depends on it. Right. This isn't a close personal fucking friend of yours. It's, nope. the, it's the Autobot <laughs> at the Hoover vacuum place. What did you think of this product? You fucking, like a normal person, just throw that in the trash like everybody else. <laughs> exactly. You don't actually be like, well, I don't want to leave a review, but since you asked... <laughs> right. They, probably, they, they could have not even done that. <laughs> she just, might not even got that. She might just be insane. Right? Might, Based on the way she wrote everything else, she may just be insane. <laughs> She's talking to the vacuum. Vacuum's like, review me. <laughs> what? I don't want to Hoover. I don't want to Hoover. Come on, review I'm, me. I'm a naughty sweeper. I'm a naughty sweeper. I don't care about your fur. <laughs> but my dinners have hair. I don't, it's fur to me. Go review me. Go review me. I'll clog all fucking day, Susie. I'm going to scratch your floors. Scratch I'm, your floors, Susie. I'm going to scratch your floor. I'm going to clog your fucking precious doodle hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay I'll, fine. I'll do it. Fine. Fine. You, you want my opinion? I'll give it to you. <laughs> I'll give it to you. So that's all. That just, uh, it just, it never ceases to entertain me. No, oh, no. The energy people will put into reviews. It's never going to stop being entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you that. Oh, All right, God. let's turn it around and okay. look at a nice thing okay. uh, for this week with Sliver of Hope. Sliver of Hope. Sliver! Uh, this was sent in by Dummy Emily. Okay, before that, we get to Emily's thing, yes. I just want to get this thought out. Okay. I just wanted to start, I want to take a page from Susie, oh. pretending that she doesn't have, that no one actually did ask her, <laughs> and just start saying insulting things about people's stuff, and then when they get like offended, be like, right. sorry, but you asked for my opinion. No, I didn't. And, and they were like, no, you didn't. I'll be like, tomato, tomato, <laughs> right. and then just walk away. That sounds like a fun person to be around. It sounds like the best person. Just shit on it. Don't like that. Don't like that. Like, why are you even fucking tell me that? Sorry. <laughs> but you asked for my opinion. No, I didn't. Tomato, tomato. Keep telling yourself that. You keep telling yourself that, kid. <laughs> just walk off. God, I fucking hate that guy. They've got like, their cars and like, pictures, like achievements. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where'd you get that car? That car's a piece of shit. Hey, who asked you? Sorry, but you asked for my opinion. <laughs> I'm going to give it to you. No, I didn't. <laughs> Well, yeah. that's fucking your life, isn't it? Right. Tomatoes, potatoes. Tomatoes, potatoes. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Just have it all just jumbled up. Just be the craziest person. <laughs> well, tomatoes, potatoes. That's not even how you say that. Well, it's your opinion, isn't it? See you later, uh, <laughs> Crocky croc Gator. And then when they're like, let's, that's not even how you say that. We'll look on the bright side. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking? You just say phrases. <laughs> Tomorrow's a better day. Tomorrow's a better day. <laughs> hey, you know what? The road to hell is paved with good intentions. <laughs> right. Fucking what? <laughs> Jesus. Don't cry over spilt milk, my friend. <laughs> okay. I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, don't ask for my opinion. 
<laughs> All right, so this sent yeah. in by Dummy Emily. Uh, and I know that at the time that this episode's coming out, vaccines are getting easier and easier to obtain. Okay. Uh, however, it was not like that for a long time. Yeah. And this teen did something about it. 14 years old and helps hundreds secure the COVID-19 vaccine appointments through his own database, the Chicago Vaccine Angels. Whoa. So, instead of doing nothing, here's what he did. For many yeah. people, the path to getting the COVID-19 vaccine is long and a windy road and paved with good intentions. <laughs> but Benjamin Kagan... A Chico of Chicago Vaccine Angels is taking the legwork out of it for those who don't have the time, resources, or computer know-how to locate a dose. So the 14-year-old tracks down where and when vaccines are available and makes appointments for people on a waiting list. It's a great feeling being able to help people. I personally helped 115 people, said Kagan. So he basically got <laughs> wow. this idea when he was setting up shots for his grandparents yeah. and realized how hard it was. He also realized that he was really good at it. Okay. Uh, and then you know he, he got inspired by some other organizations that were doing similar things, and he just volunteered and got involved. That's awesome. And then he awesome. started spitballing it. Uh, he'd you know sit up late at night when you know a lot of these websites would update. Yeah. And then yeah. so he just would take people that wanted to get it and just help them do it. Which I mean it makes what a, a good lot. Kid. Of, yeah. Think about your parents on. He literally saves people's lives there on like iPhones and shit. Like they <laughs> suck. Yeah. A lot yeah. of them are terrible. And then they have to go mm -hmm. use the internet's. Oh yeah. And go to the website. Right. And enter information with places they've never been. It's not, it doesn't go well. Absolutely. It's not as easy as you might think. I've, no, that's great. Yeah. What, what a good, good way to identify a need and then figure that out. Yep. Just help out in any way you can. I just love the versatility yeah. of uh, like Sliver of Hope. You never really know what angle mm -hmm. the good's going to come from. Yeah. Whether it's like buying out the vendors from last week or, you know, going onto a, all, all, you're, all he's doing is going onto a website, but just helping out a population that doesn't know how to fucking website. Right. <laughs> it's huge. I don't know. I Could just, be saving their life. Yeah, like you said. I just thought that choice you made for that article was really stupid. Mm -hmm. Hey, sorry, B. You asked for my opinion. <laughs> I know. I didn't. Don't cry over spilled milk. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I was just trying to force that in there. <laughs> I think it fits. <laughs> that was great. You don't ask for my opinion. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tomatoes, potatoes. Right, you get it. See you later, crocodater. <laughs> uh, all right, let's take, us a, let's take a look at some weird shit on the internet. Okay. I got a couple funny things for you. The internet has all sorts of neat things. Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek, together, as a couple. To you, from internet. In my notes, I have this sent in by Dummy Mart. But I don't I don't <laughs> okay. know if it's Mart or Marty. Mart. But I've never seen M-A-R-T. But that's what oh, I have in my notes. Maybe just Mart. Mart! I've okay. never heard that before. But do you ever want to get naked <laughs> on a big boat? Um... I oh. haven't thought about it, but I could. Okay. I can well, they, see that being appealing. There, There is like a giant, like one of the Caribbean cruises that's nothing but a nude festival. Whoa. Whoa, it's sold out. So they got cruises here. The big nude boat <laughs> for 2022. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude. This yeah. is so funny to me. I don't know why. I've never been to a nudist colony, but the problem I've heard from a lot of people mm -hmm. is... Th the, when you go to the nudist colony, the people you would hope to be at the nudist colony are not the people who are there. People you don't want to see naked are the ones that are naked? 90% of the people who are there are naked are the people like, I, would, I don't know if you should <laughs> oh, be man, naked. Put some clothes on. Good for you, but that's not what I was hoping for. <laughs> Good for you, but I'm getting off this fucking boat. So like, like if, you're, if you're going there looking for like a sexual time, mm -hmm. I've heard that in general that's that's not gonna, what you're, you're going to find. Right. And I'm not going to go over all the rules here, but um, just out of curiosity, I looked oh, them up. And yeah. there are, there are like, you have to ones? wear, you have to, no. It's like you have to have sex. No, there's a, you have to wear clothes to dinner. Oh. There's no dicks out with your pancakes. Okay. That's how I read it. Uh -huh. And you can't like solicit others uh, for sex. Can you have a boner? For, I mean, good luck stopping that's what me. I was, that's what I always think about it at a news <laughs> colony. Like, it, it, Limbo! It, it, <laughs> get it? I get it. Because a dick. Like, I, how low? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's this, this limp limbo stick. <laughs> oh, touch your shoulder. <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> but I do think about like, what is protocol there you know, like, like, like I, I would imagine erections are frowned upon. <laughs> yeah. Right. Cause they're aggressive. Mm -hmm. If you're yeah. new to the game, you're, I mean, it's probably hard to control at first, but you're also just naked and walking around. I don't know. I don't know. I never spent a lot of time naked around a lot of people. I haven't either. I, I, and that changes today. I changed it. I went skinny dipping and kind of like, it's, it's like we were like naked camping with a group of friends in college. <laughs> and I was worried about being like getting a boner in front of, cause there was a, you know, it was like a half dudes, half girls and all the girls were cute. And but you know I, I was pretty proud of my penis. He, <laughs> he behaved himself. He was taking the day, taking the night off. He took the night off, <laughs> and he was he, he was cool. He Bef didn't make it weird. <laughs> Beforehand, you're like, listen, man, listen, I'm dude. gonna need you to just lay low. Just come on. Come this on. isn't about you. Listen, I, I I know I need your attention a lot. 
I don't want your attention. Listen, I'll make a deal with you. I'm going to jerk you off <laughs> right before we go. And then just. And then the sh- second we get home, I'm going to jerk you off again. Sh- yes. But when we're there, I need you to behave. No funny business. No, no funny business, mister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey! I just pictured your dick a little bow tie on it. Okay, Dan. No funny business. <laughs> <laughs> he, little Dick like puts his clown wig away. No, All right. no problem. No problem, sir. <laughs> 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 and you're fly. <laughs> All right, we have one last thing. Okay. This does require a little bit of setup. It was sent in by Dummy John. Uh, and he says, hey, dumpster fires. Get it? Mm-hmm. Dumpster? That's I like funny. That. Hey, dumpster mm-hmm. fires. So I have a younger cousin who's always been an eccentric entrepreneurial spirit. At the age of eight, he was caught stealing his dad's wallet. My aunt asked what his plan was with the wallet, and he said, I want to invest in diamonds. So anyway, he dropped out of high school to pursue a music career. <laughs> toured, I just love that part. <laughs> uh, toured all over the place. Then became a carny carving goofy wood signs at the traveling carnival. Huh? Next, he became an air traffic flashlight guy at the Minneapolis airport. Shows you how little one needs to know to get that job. <laughs> uh, then he Scary. sold presidential pens out of L.A., where he got a small commission for selling pens that were supposedly used by presidents to sign bills and shit. Who knows? Oh, my God. Anyway, he's been in the odd jobs forever until recently. He taught himself how to code and now works full time uh, you know, on a tech startup in Madison, Wisconsin. Wow. He's doing great. Everyone in the fam is completely in awe at this young dropout, witty, carny, pen peddling air traffic controller. His land of the job that is probably paying more than his parents could ever make. Wow. So, what comes with a steady job? Time to get entrepreneurial. <laughs> his older brother, uh, of whom is my age, sent me a link to his new online enterprise. Let's just say it's really corny. <laughs> Cornying the market here. You'll see. You can request a custom phrase or word that my cousin will then spell out with corn kernels on a freshly dried corn cob. Hmm? You can send to your friends or fam. I can't believe I'm trying to explain this process. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. So it's cornogram.com. Uh, and it's exactly what you think. Go ahead and bring it up on the screen. Zach, fuck! Here you go. I uh, Look at it. So you eat dick. <laughs> what? Look at it. So you can buy them. You can buy a corn So he has a corn oh cob, and he just carves the letters into the corn. <laughs> Dad so, joke <laughs> in the bottom right. Shucks. Life shucks. This motherfucker. And you have porn on the cob, porn too. Porn on the cob. Get it? Mm-hmm. I, man, I, I'm going to get you the eat dick. What the fuck, beef? <laughs> just I, like, I like the... Shit, dude. I like happy, happy B-Day, bitch, is 30 bucks, <laughs> but corn beef is 20 bucks. Uh-huh. Uh, what the fuck is 20 bucks? What are the other options? Uh, oh, uh, Life Shucks is 24, 24.99. <laughs> the better the pun, <laughs> the better the higher the price. Right, you can get Eat Dick for 19.99 or you can get Life Shucks for 24.99 <laughs> on the same size corn cob. You, you got to pay for that joke. <laughs> Got, it pays extra. If he can sell, good for him. Yeah. If he can make up extra money selling these, I wonder how much time he spends putting these together. I don't know. He makes so much that he just ends up like quitting his coding job, right? Full on carving corn. Just a cor- <laughs> just a corn carver. What a funny fucking job. That's like what we were talking about earlier. I mean, like, like a potato co- cockfight co- coordinator. Right. What do you do? I used to be a cockfight coordinator. Mm-hmm. Now I'm a corn carver. I'm moving up in the world. What? <laughs> I'm pretty scared. What are you doing? Check it out. He's like, get, get out your little book. I said, wow, that's that's crazy. Successful? Not yet. <laughs> right, right, right. Not yet, but we're getting there. How many customers do you have? Five. They're me. <laughs> They're me. <laughs> you know, test tomato the, potato. That's the product. <laughs> it's the worst fucking corn on the cob. What? Yes, for my opinion. No, no, I didn't. I'm trying to force tomato potato into his. I, I, I feel like that one really. I, I had a hard time not thinking about it the next few little segments. <laughs> I just want that to be in the lexicon because it would be so, so confusing. Where yeah. you, you, you're having an argument with somebody and you're never two sides aren't going to agree. <laughs> so just agree to disagree. But the way you say that is, well, you know, tomato, potato. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. You blew it. <laughs> That's not how you said it. Well, tomato, potato again. <laughs> right. And I'm doubling down. Doubling down on tomato, potato. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. We got a couple messages here. Okay. Uh, listen for our dummies, and then we'll wrap up okay. this episode. Zach, roll it. <laughs> Junk mail! Junk mail! Coming in from dummy Garrett. Garrett. You got Cummins Laud and Joe Dicked. He writes, <laughs> Dear Suckmaster, Horse Peen, and New Guy. I'm a very long time listener, but first time emailer. I had to finally email in because I got my first bad Cummins Laud Joe Dicking. Okay. I took my truck to the local Jiffy Lube for my routine oil change. I was listening to Is We Dumb on the way. Mushroom, Kegels, Barbie Jeep, Alpha Male, to be specific. Okay. It cracks me every time. <laughs> when I'm a little insider, when I'm writing these like descriptions, yeah. I, it, I can't 
I laugh almost every single time. <laughs> like he's trying to describe what that episode's about. Mm-hmm. It kills me. In four words. Right. So love the titles, by the way. With all the knowledge of someone who has listened to countless other Cummins Law stories, Bluetooth issues, uh, Bluetooth issues were already on my radar. I pulled up and stopped the podcast, got out, shut the radio off, hand the lady the keys. I take my phone and headphones to the waiting area. And I check that the audio input on my phone has been switched to my headphones. Satisfied that I've done my due diligence, I fire the podcast up again and continue passing the time. Well, <laughs> little did I know, my phone apparently prioritizes my truck, and my truck just reverts to the present volume on restart. So when they are done changing my oil and they started the truck, Dan and Joe left the safety of my headphones and went right into the truck and the world. Before I was able to realize what happened and shut it off, the nice folks at Jiffy Lube got to hear Dan and Joe <laughs> say roughly, So Kyler was on your snowmobile? You should have pushed him off. <laughs> be back to get in a minute, you little beta bitch. When he loses his hands from frostbite, he'd be like, yeah, you shouldn't have fucking cried. <laughs> when she came in to tell me my truck was ready, <laughs> she couldn't even make eye contact. <laughs> I live in the Bible Belt South, and this particular uh, person was not ready for any of that. He says, hey, you're ready to go. Did uh, somebody call you? Or uh, I was like, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I knew, but I just could not explain it. <laughs> oh, okay, then. I guess thought I heard someone seem mad. Nope. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> so no, I bye. guess the lady thinks me and a couple of my friends really hate some guy named Kyler. I got to find a new place to get my old changes. Thanks, guy. Three out of five stars. Wouldn't change a thing. Dummy, Space Lizard, Garrett. Thank you, Garrett. Uh, and that then our, yeah, that's pretty funny. I, lo- I love those stories. I, I, me too. I, I never get tired of those. Any of the, like the Cummins Law, the Joe Dick, like, you know, like from just listening to any of the podcasts, inopportune moments. Well, I guess mostly just is we dumb and time suck. Right. Like uh, the re- scared of this is for the most part just like scary stuff, but not like horrific statements out of context. <laughs> right. uh, they never cease to crack me up because it, it's so hard to explain. You can't. You can't. You gotta move on. Right. Like you said, get a new place. To yeah, you just gotta never go back there. Get your real changed. Hey, sorry <laughs> about that again. Uh, next piece of junk mail coming in from dummies Harrison and Anna who write, Dear Genius Goat Fuckers, my wife and I are probably the biggest fans in Germany. Uh, I saw your reportage on the hand-drawn letters for sale this past week. As someone who should know, that shit has money laundering operation written all over it which I did not even huh. think about. Remember the cards on eBay where the guy just wrote like one letter then was selling it for 55 bucks? Oh, yeah. Oh. So he's saying... I didn't think a, of that either. A deeper meaning there. That's just a front to, yeah. to, high, to launder money. New business model. Right. Yeah. It says, don't pay me for those drugs and cash. Rather, buy your wife a happy birthday present in the form of some kick-ass oh. hand-drawn letters and right, college rule for several thousand. Shit. <laughs> Lots of hyphens. Anyway, then you guys are the best. Look forward to all the Bad Magic shows during the week. Bright spot in all of the lockdown. Thanks, Harrison and Anna. Harrison and Anna, thanks for being smarter than us. <laughs> yeah, I that never occurred to me. Who would buy a fucking... I mean, it doesn't matter. What if this God, guy's like, hey! These... Like, that is just his... I know. Bit. Come hey, on, Hey! I use a fair price! <laughs> you don't have to agree. Listen, tomato, just don't potato! Buy it. <laughs> just you don't, don't buy it! <laughs> <laughs> the, the cop, someone's listening right now. They, I mean, he gets. they bust him. They swat him. And he, just, he just has, like, stacks of actual paper. Right. No money. No, I really no do. Drugs. I'm doing this. Sure you are, asshole. Sure you are. Get in the car. Yeah. Talk to the cops. Everyone's fucking got a story. Get the fuck in there. <laughs> All right. Well, that is uh, episode 35. That was a fun one. Let's just leave. Let's just let's just leave. I'm like, just don't even say anything at the end. We just fucking wrap up the whole show. Mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah, let's okay, do it. I'll say something. Oh, okay. <laughs> Zach Cohen. Thanks, bro. Creating some of the custom music beds for the show. Hey, Zach Flannery. Yes, sir. Producing and directing. You Yay. did a good job. Today. Good job. Thank you. It was my pleasure and honor and stuff. <laughs> oh, thanks, man. <laughs> pleasure and honor for you to be pleasured and honored. Uh, uh, Logan Keith. Getting that merch up on us. We got some new shirts. We got the Brad shirt. Got the Just Don't shirt. Those coming mm-hmm. sweatshirts, sweatshirts as well. And then we also have the brand new stickers that you can find right, uh, right now at badmagicmerch.com. Uh, the Instagram, again, that's Is We Dumb. And you can find us on Facebook as well by just searching for Is We Dumb. And the private fa- Facebook group is Is We Dummies. If you want to send in an email uh, for the content on the show, you send that to dumb at iswedumb.com. And you just want to ask a question that's a separate one at info at iswedumb.com. Mm-hmm. And we wrap things up with a dad joke, which I, I think will get you. Okay. Uh, let's roll it. Zach. Hey, you want to hear a joke? Wow. Meet dad joke. Hi. Hi. Do you know why you've never seen elephants hiding in trees? Why I've never seen elephants hiding in trees? Because mm-hmm. they're... Because they're really they're... fucking good at it. <laughs> is that the joke? <laughs> <That's> the joke. <laughs> That is a good one. It is good. I don't even consider that only a dad joke. It's no, just, that's, that's so good. Anti joke, right? Which is my really, favorite. Yeah, I was trying to think of like the clever like word pun. <laughs> yeah, because they're fucking really good at it. <laughs> right. God, that's my favorite one. It's pretty good, huh? That was and really I, good. And, and and somebody sent it in, but their email just said fake email. 
Oh no! So I didn't even get their fucking name. Oh. So whoever you are, fake email it wherever. Yeah, Thanks. good job, fake it's a email. Good joke. Bye. <laughs>